Welcome to another episode of Mike Out. This is the shorts. I have previously made quite long videos and uh, the shorts is my attempt at making shorter, more concentrated content. This one is about the arguments to carrying a tourniquet as a civilian. In our case, a tourniquet is used to uh, cut off arterial blood flow in an arm or a leg uh, due to something called catastrophic extremity hemorrhage or bleeding. In other words, if the injury you've sustained is uh, it's that bad that you will bleed out unless you stop it, then a tourniquet is a life-saving device. It is proven that tourniquets save lives of soldiers in combat. But what about in the civilian world? Is it worth carrying a tourniquet? I definitely think so. There are now articles in the medical literature that no longer condemn tourniquets in the civilian setting, like uh, this one. The conclusion says, although still underused, civilian pre-hospital tourniquet application was independently associated with a six-fold mortality reduction in patients with peripheral vascular injuries. More aggressive pre-hospital application of extremity tourniquets in civilian trauma patients with extremity hemorrhage and traumatic amputation is warranted. Whether you are working with machinery, driving a vehicle or bushcrafting in the forest, it's a good idea to carry a tourniquet. Of course, in the rare event of a terrorist attack, whether it involves IIDs or AKs, you could save many lives with a bunch of tourniquets. Recently I read about a man who accidentally cut his femoral artery just above the knee uh, with a broken wine glass when throwing out his trash. Uh, he died. A tourniquet applied in time could have saved his life. In the Swedish Armed Forces uh, we are issued the cat tourniquet. I'm, uh, I'm not a big fan of this uh, tourniquet. Uh, although it's proven very effective, I've had three break on me in training. One self-applied and two applied by other soldiers. Uh, most instructions by military worldwide teach putting it high and tight. But at least here uh, there is an over-emphasis on as tight as possible in my opinion. We are instructed to check for hemorrhage after applying them. But I doubt that everyone really understands that in reality you don't need to apply it to its breaking point. You need to apply it tight enough to stop the hemorrhage, which is the most important thing. On my arm I have applied the RATS Rapid Application Tourniquet System uh, by Jeff Kirkham, uh, which is the tourniquet I always carry. The cool things about it is its versatility, cost effectiveness, application speed and size. You can train multiple times uh, with it and still be sure that it will be reliable if you need it for real, unlike the cat. And it fits just about anywhere. It can also be used on thin limbs of infants and children, uh, unlike the cat. Here I tested it on my son. Maybe he's uh, like me because he didn't complain much and I actually applied it tight enough that his radial pulse disappeared. It can also be used on dogs, for example. It's uh, elastic, which means it will adapt to an increase in swelling or movement, unlike the cat. The reason behind uh, the fear to apply it to loose is that it can make things worse. If you have ever had uh, venous blood sampling done, you probably had a loose band or rubber tube around your arm. This is applied tight enough to cut off venous return. Uh, but uh, loose enough to alter allow arterial blood flow through. The body will compensate pressure and the veins will expand, making it easier to get the needle in the vein to perform the phlebotomy. Needless to say, anything making phlebotomy easier is a bad idea when you have a hemorrhage. Uh, it is very important to block arterial blood flow and then you need uh, substantially more pressure than when using a blood sampling tourniquet. Uh, wow. As you can see, uh, maybe you can't see, but it's white. But yeah, you can probably see it. it my hand is turning blue. Uh, my nails are turning blue. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, making, uh, oi, it 
yeah, it's starting to hurt a bit right now. So, uh, as you can see, my hand is turning blue, uh, meaning the tissue is low on oxygen. The hand is also not swollen, while well, you saw that, indicating that arterial blood flow is most likely occluded. As I do not have a hemorrhage in my right, in my arm right now, uh, I can check my radial pulse. Uh, and if I cannot find uh, a pulse, uh, then the tourniquet that I have applied is probably tight enough. In real life, for obvious reasons, absence of radial pulse is no guarantee that you have stopped the hemorrhage, uh, even if the arm still has a hand attached to it. You have to confirm that the hemorrhage has stopped by inspecting the wound. Um, it is also very important to write down the time when the tourniquet was applied. In this case I wrote it on my hand. Uh, the general consensus is that it's safe to wear a tourniquet for less than two hours uh, before nerve damage or other complications occur. One study found that below 100 minutes is safe, but above 100 minutes is not. Of course, you should uh, never remove a tourniquet on your own once it's placed. Uh, but let a healthcare professional make that call. I have now uh, worn this one for 20 minutes. Uh, so it's, uh, it's about time to take it off because it's, uh, it's really starting to hurt. And uh, yeah, that's one of the downsides of tourniquets. But this one is actually super comfortable compared to some of the alternatives. So yeah. As oxygen returns to the tissue, this is actually where a lot of the damage can occur due to something called reperfusion syndrome, which is another reason to keep the tourniquet time as short as possible. Meaning that after it's been placed, priority number one is to get to an emergency department as quick as possible. Yeah, that's... Get some bruising also when you use tourniquets. That will disappear eventually. When applying a tourniquet, it is important to make sure nothing is compromising its effectiveness. Like things in a pocket, for example. Either apply it above or below the pocket or check that the pocket is empty. This is not an instructional video, there are many of those on YouTube. For civilian use, I suggest you follow the manufacturer's instructions and training. Armed forces usually update their recommendations as things change. So if you are not in such an organization, you may not receive the latest recommendation, while the manufacturer may probably have the new guidelines. The reasoning behind applying a tourniquet high is that you don't know if a projectile or uh, debris has gone up through the limb, either by the angle of entry or by deflection inside the body, and severed arteries can also creep, creep up a bit inside the wound. The following article has instructions supported by references to other scientific papers on how to properly apply a tourniquet. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and uh, thumbs up, comment, share, subscribe and all that thing if you like this video. And I will be back shortly with uh, more. This is Mike, out.